sent you a bill for giving you discernment to take crazy folk out your life what if God sent you a bill for keeping you in your right mind when you lost everything what if God sent you a bill for letting you have your joy when you didn't have no money what if God sent you a bill I wish I had somebody who said God deserves my best we're blessed to be a blessing a life to make a difference there's hope for my brother hope for my sister life more abundantly so here he is now Manasseh's granddaddy was a fool he's dead dad Ammon killed violently when he was eight but in spite of that he did which was right in the sight of Lord now when he got to the age of 26 can somebody say 26 he's still young 18 years later the Bible says he calls look at verse number three I'm almost finished he calls all of his men in his cabinet under him he said look at verse number four do me a favor go up to Hilkiah the priest that he may sum up the silver which is brought into the house of the Lord he said I, what I want you to do is I want you to go get the money from the house get the high priest to Kaya tell him bring me the money that they brought for taxes bring me the money that they've been keeping in the chambers in the Treasury he said in verse 5 and this is what I want you to do I want you to deliver that money over to those who do the work get the carpenters and let them give the money which do the work he said because here's the problem I got now that I'm old enough and I understand how I made it my granddaddy neglected the temple my grandfather uh, desecrated the temples by bringing idols and nobody has done any work on God's house he says what I want you to do is y'all make sure that the temple gets renovated because when I look at my life and when I look at what could have happened to me over the past 18 years he says this is what I recognize that somebody kept me oh God I thank God for my mama's influence but it wasn't my mama's influence alone that sustained me over the past 18 years. He said, no, I didn't have an earthly father. Well, y'all got the brakes on me. But I had a heavenly father, and his house is in disrepair. So get the money from Hilkiah, find the carpenter, the brick masons, and tell them that I want to have me a worship service. Because I don't feel comfortable going into my daddy's house to tell him thank you when the church is broke down and the roof is leaking. So I want y'all to get the building together so I can come now and lift my hands and give God some glory. Can I tell you something? If you look at your life, how God has kept you over the past 18 years, danger seen and unseen if you look at how God kept you when you couldn't have kept yourself my God okay let me go back uh, maybe a little longer for some others of y'all maybe not 18 years let me go back 50 years for some of y'all my God when you were at Morris Brown or going to Washington or Gordon High School uh, doing what you wanted to do living any kind of way outside the ark of safety not filled with the Holy Ghost uh, and somehow some way God provided for you and kept you when you were a fool kept you from you kept you from stuff my God you ought to have in your mind right now that's why I gotta make sure God's house is in order because I got to come and have me a worship experience you know why because it's nobody but God who's kept me over the past 18 years can I tell you something when I look at my own life oh my God it marvels to me how good God has been to me when I look at the stuff that could have happened to me when I was a fool, when I was not covered, when I was angry and bitter, when I looked at the thing that could have happened to me and look where I am now, that's why I give God the glory, the honor, and the praise. Some of us point the finger at folk who have HIV. Some of us point the finger at people who had children out of wedlock, but 
the truth be told, uh, a few of us uh, did the same thing somebody else did, uh, but they just didn't get caught. Uh, and before you judge somebody for having AIDS, A-I-D-S, uh, or HIV, here's the reality, a whole lot of us should have had A through Z. Uh, but because God kept you uh, and provided for you, how dare you come in this house uh, and not want to give God your best praise? Uh, why don't you look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, he kept me when I couldn't keep myself. He kept me when I was not in my right mind. And that's why I came this morning to give him glory because if it had not been for the Lord who was on my side, where would I be? Shut somebody and say, he's been good to me. Listen, listen, he, he, he says, he says, he says in verse number seven, get the carpenters, get the builders, get the masons, get some timber, and come and restore, make sure that God's house is repaired. My God, that's one reason why you shouldn't mind giving to God's house. What if God sent you a bill for watching over you all last night while you slumbered and while you slept? What if God sent you a bill oh, to allow no hurt, harm, or danger to come to your body? No fire, no thieves, no robbers broke in your house. What if God sent you a bill? For early this morning, dispatching his darling angel to touch your body with a finger of love and allowing your eyes to optically come open to greet the virgin light of a brand new day. What if God sent you a bill for keeping trouble out your thalamus, hype out your hypothalamus, and mess out of your medulla out blood and gutter? What if God sent you a bill for giving you discernment to take crazy folk out your life? What if God sent you a bill for keeping you in your right mind when you lost everything? What if God sent you a bill for letting you have your joy when you didn't have no money. What if God sent you a bill? I wish I had somebody who said God deserves my best. And so as they, as they were renovating the house of God, Bible tells me that as they were renovating the house of God, they end up finding something. Oh, God. He's trying to prioritize the kingdom of God. In verse number 8, Hilkiah said unto Shepan the scribe, guess what happened? When I put God's house first, I messed around and found something. I found the book of the law. Y'all missed it. This refers to either the, the Torah, the, the first five books of the Bible, the Pentateuch, or maybe the book of Deuteronomy. It's believed that Moses had given the books to Joshua. But when Moses gave the scroll, the books to Joshua, somehow between Joshua and Josiah, the book got lost. And you know what I thought about? That's part of the problem in our world. That somehow between generation to generation, the book got lost. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you, Holy Ghost. I remember having to sit down to eat at my grandfather's house. And before you could dig into the macaroni and cheese uh, and the fried chicken. Uh, and a potato salad. Uh, as y'all can tell, I'm hungry. I ain't eat no breakfast. And it's only I can eat fries. Before you can put your fork in it, you have to say, wait a minute. Before you put something on your plate, boy, you better go around this whole table and everybody got to say a Bible verse. Okay, y'all, okay, maybe I'm just on, on somebody from the country. Some of y'all, uh, and, and I always 
always went first, and mine was Jesus the well. Y'all not gonna help me. I wish somebody help me. I wish somebody help me around here. Does anybody know what I'm talking about? But you know what it taught me? It taught me how to put God first. It taught me how to never take God's blessings and not give God no thanks in advance. But somehow between generation to this generation, the book got lost. And now we raise these young baby kids who ain't grateful for nothing. Ain't thankful for nothing. Eating the food. Ain't thank God. Get mad at you because you didn't cook what you want. Mama, I don't want that. And then, what you want, baby? What you want me to go get for you? What y'all want to have? This, the book done got lost. What done happened to us? Everybody eating three different meals from three different restaurants. What done happened to us? You had one where mama cooked. That's what everybody ate. If you didn't, my God, I wish I had some. Somehow, the book done got lost. We got a whole generation of spoiled kids who got a sense of entitlement. Don't want to clean the room. Don't want to wash the dishes. And we found them $150 tennis shoes to put on a 10 cent brain. The book done got lost. Hey friends, I'm coming back in a moment. We have more message. We'll be right back. Sometimes you ain't got to be the smartest, but you can be the sweetest. Yo, okay. Sometimes if you ain't got it in your head, it's about how you treat people. Learn how to go up to the principal's office and open up your mouth. Sometimes people will write letters for you, give you extra credit, curve you on a gr you know, grade you on a curve because you had to write hard. Every time someone invests, every time someone's a partner with us, they help us to reach other boys and girls, to reclaim them uh, from child sex trafficking. Whenever someone invests in us, they help us to touch the young boy, the young girl uh, who has HIV. They help us to minister to the woman who's been battered, uh, the child who's been battered that has nowhere to go. So they help us to go out and make a difference in the world. Partnering with E. Dewey Smith Ministries connects you to a growing global outreach, touching the lives of the battered, imprisoned, sexually abused, and needy. But by partnering with us, you really become partakers and not just part of the responsibility, but also the blessing. So uh, we're just excited to have persons who want to make a difference for Christ. We're excited about people and transform the world. Impact the world with your partnership with EDS Ministries. Your monthly donation of $25 or more helps to impact the lives of thousands. Join Carpenters at Work. Become a partner with E. Dewey Smith Ministries today. Because of wonderful people like you, people around the world are hearing the Word of God. Why is it we got computers? iPads. Books. The internet. When the old slaves would want to read and write so bad. When it was illegal for them to read and write. They would get their hands cut off or their eyes plucked out if they were caught reading because it was illegal for a slave to read. Fight to go to school to get integrated, but love to get an education. But even before Brown versus Board of Education, during times of integration, the educational system of our people was better. And now it's free for you to read. Go to school free. Books free. Lunch free. And almost 60% graduation rate. Know why? Because too many of our young people are on Facebook. But they never put their face in this book. The book got lost. The problem is, you can do the nay nay, but they never read nay whom. The book done got lost. When our young people can memorize all the complex lyrics of Drake and Mix Mill, but declare you can't memorize algebraic formulas and geometric equations, the book 
done got lost. When we can break down to the ground but can't break open a science book, the book done got lost. When we can socialize in the lunch room but spend no time studying in the library, the book got lost. When we can take selfies uh, but can't do self-examination, the book done got lost. When he put God's house first, the book that his daddy didn't have, his granddaddy didn't have, God will give you a word. Well, I wish I had time to deal with this like I feel it. I wish I had somebody who could testify that God will give you a word when you weren't looking for it. <laughs> huh. The Bible said the book got lost. But when they were cleaning the house and renovating the house, the high priest found the book of the law. And they got the book and they brought it to the king. And the king was so worried because the book had gotten lost. And the Bible says when the book got lost, that he, the king was upset. Let me close. Because he thought that since they had forsaken God, that some damage and some condemnation was going to come to them because they had not been following the book of the law. Are you going to help me here? And, 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 and you know what happens then? And so the king does something wonderful. The Bible says that what he did in verse number 14, that when they couldn't figure out well, they're going to be punished because they had not been following the book that was lost. That they went and they found a prophetess by the name of Huldah. It's right there in verse number 14. They went, the Bible says, and they went unto Huldah, the prophetess, the wife of Shalom. You see that? They commune with Huldah. And uh, she said to them in verse number 15, you go tell the man that sent you. Because <laughs> the king sent the high priest to go find the prophetess, and she ain't moved. I like her because she, she's talking about Josiah, but look how she refers to him. You go tell the man. Huldah was a bad sister. She didn't call his name or didn't call him the king. Y'all go tell the man that sent you. Sound like she has some Afrocentricity in her. Y'all go tell him. You go tell the man that sent you. Oh, God. That God said, now, don't you miss this. They went to a woman. Now, remember, just in case you didn't know it, Jeremiah was, was living at the same time. Matter of fact, Jeremiah and Huldah were some kin. Huldah is a descendant of Rahab, the prostitute. Huldah also is in the lineage of Jesus. So she comes from some attitude. Now, please don't get this twisted. Jeremiah was a man. He was a prophet of God. But this word is powerful because in this case, they didn't go to Jeremiah to get a word. Here's a good word for some of you who think that God can't use a woman. Some of the most precise prophecies I ever got, I didn't get from somebody who was prophet lying. I got from a woman of God who read me like she was reading the mail. You all thank God that God will send somebody else. Let me say a word to some of you school teachers and some of you students who go into school. Sometimes it ain't all about whether you got the words right on the test. Sometimes it's about going to the teacher and saying, yes, ma'am, no, ma'am. I tried my best. Can I get extra credit? 
Can I stay after school? Can I clean up the classroom? Is there anything? Yes, ma'am, I'll do better. No, ma'am, I won't sleep in class. Yes, ma'am, I'll be respectful. No, ma'am, I, I won't talk and be disruptive in the class. Yes, ma'am. Listen, sometimes you ain't got to be the smartest, but you can be the sweetest. Y'all, okay, sometimes if you ain't got it in your head, it's about how you treat people. Learn how to go up to the principal's office and open up your mouth. Sometimes people will write letters for you, give you extra credit, curve you on a y'all they grade you on a curve because you had to write hard. And and because his heart was right, why was that time? And now said God not going to destroy you. Let me tell you something. Sometimes God will bless you even if you did the wrong thing. Simply because your heart was right. See, some of us got nasty hearts and nasty spirits, and you're not humble. You don't walk in humility. Let me tell you something. Some of my biggest blessings didn't come because of my gift. It came because I took the low road. Some of you so prideful and arrogant. Remember this, pride comes just before destruction. But if you humble yourself under the hand of the Almighty God, in due time, he will exalt you. I was doing an interview the other day, and somebody said to me, Dewey Smith, the lady said, Dr. Smith, did you ever see God blessing your ministry? What did you do to get to this ministry? Give us some principles. I said, what, ma'am? Did you ever see this? See, being able to pass the thousands of people? I said, ma'am, let me tell you something. When God called me to preach, my biggest vision that God gave me was to fill up a church that would seat 100 people with chairs than I. I fasted and prayed for months and weeks that God would let me see a 100-seat church field. That was my whole vision for ministry in 1990. So that's why now I don't get impressed if a big platform comes. I don't get impressed if somebody who I've admired and followed knows my name. Because guess what? Whatever God does in my life now is gravy. It's more than I asked for. And it's more than I deserved. And if you and I will learn how to stay small enough long enough, God can make you big enough soon enough. But you got to humble yourself. And so what he did, and now he said, what I'm going to do lastly is I'm going I'm to reinstitute the Passover. Passover went back to the time of Moses. When God sent Moses to deliver the children of Israel, he told him, I'm going to send the ten plagues. And God told Moses, tell all the nation that they need to go and get the blood of a lamb and put the blood of the lamb on their doorpost. Because that night in Egypt, God said, I'm going to send the death angel to come through Egypt. And if the death angel does not see the blood on the doorpost, then the death angel is going to go into that house and take the firstborn child and kill the firstborn child as punishment to Pharaoh. But if the death angel sees the blood, <laughs> y'all got the brakes on me, then what the death angel will do will pass over that house and spare the lives of those who lived on the inside. Passover commemorated what God did for Israel in Egypt. But it was also an Old Testament satirological prototype because what it was, it signified that not only would a lamb be killed in Egypt, because at the time of Adam and Eve, it was one lamb per person. And then it became one lamb per family. Uh, at Egypt, it was one lamb for the household. Then it became one lamb for the nation. But uh, 
when John saw Jesus. He said, here is the Lamb of God. I feel old school. I, I'm sorry, I'm, I'm sorry, Pastor Bob, I know it's youth day, but some. Here the Lamb of God which takes away the sins of the world. Yeah, Josiah Sippa was saying to us that if I'm going to make it to the next chapter in my life, I've got to make sure that I prioritize the blood. I'm a young man, but I need the blood. Friends, I'm out of time, but I'm certain not out of message. So I want to thank my partners and my friends for helping us. Your calls, your partnership, and your support helps us to carry the message of Christ all over the world. If you've been blessed by our broadcast, let me hear from you. Uh, send us a letter, an email, respond by social media. I need your help to carry the gospel around the world. I've got to leave you now. My time is far spent. But always remember this. If you'll be good to God, then God will be good to you. Let's continue to be living hope. God bless you. Be transformed by Dr. Dewey's message. Sometimes it's that pressing, it's that shaking. Sometimes God, even in your pain as a child, was preparing you for something that was great. Who would have ever thought when an eight-year-old boy with no granddad or no dad in his life having to be raised by a single parent could be known for doing what's right in the sight of the Lord. You got to thank God. He let me do right in spite of me. He let me, he leads me in paths of righteousness for... His name say. Order your own copy of this message today on CD or DVD when you visit our website or call 877-894-HOPE. I'm so excited about this show because we get to reset what people think they know about the word preacher. I'm excited about the show because we get the opportunity to inspire so many people who are hurting. Uh, my philosophy is that of Dr. King. We talked about having a more beloved community. And I think we need to have some television and some options that brings the world together. It is absolutely amazing that four black men are in television in the middle of the day and it's not court TV. We get to share hope and laughter with an entire generation that is thirsty for a new perspective. There are four seasons in a year. Everyone has to go through a winter. The spring is around the corner. So I see this not just as a form of entertainment, but hopefully a way that the world can become a better place, a more beloved community. Meet Dr. E. Dewey Smith in any of these great locations. Thursday, August 25th at T.B. Stewart Ministries Incorporated in Houston, Texas. Tuesday, August 30th at Victory Apostolic Church in Matson, Illinois. Wednesday, September 7th at Victory Cathedral Worship Center in Bolingbrook, Illinois. For more information on any of these great events, call 877-894-HOPE. You're going to walk into something that's so big uh, that you're going to lose your mind. You won't be able to tell enough people. You can't get the words out of your mouth. I said it's coming now uh, because you are anointed and you had your heart right. God got more in store. I want you to put your hand together right there. Give God praise. I said open your mouth and give it praise. Open your mouth and tell God thank you. Say, that word is for me, that word is for me, that word is for me, something big is coming to me.